Greetings YouTube, welcome back to Final Fantasy XII. In this video I'm going to be selecting job roles for our party, spending our license points and then putting our build through the test in trial mode. There we have it, I've just gone ahead and selected all my job roles and have spent all my license points as well, at least most of them. And we've got a nice boost in our stats. The only thing I haven't been able to do is uh, give them optimal equipment at the moment because I can't use the teleport stone. But as soon as I can do that, then we'll also max out the equipment we can get for this point in the game anyhow. Uh, a few people have been asking about the Demon's Bane Sword, which was previously present in the last dungeon, the Tomb of Wraithwell. Well, it's actually moved for the Zodiac Age, which is why I didn't go ahead and get it in uh, the last episode. So if you was wondering about that, that's why we'll be getting it a little bit later on uh, in the near future, but still not at this point. Right then, so the jobs I've gone for, as you can see, are laid out on the right hand side. And arguably Fran and Ash could have switched the roles that I've given them, so that Ash could have been the Red Battle Mage and Archer, and Fran could have been the White Mage and Machinist. Uh, but the reason I've done it this way is because, and, they, and the reason for that is that Ash is generally better at range damage due to her higher uh, attack, but uh, Fran has access to some White Magics anyhow, so it's a good idea to not give her White Mage, in my opinion, so that you have multiple characters, at least with early curing spells, which is why I've gone ahead with the order that I've done. Ultimately, it's not going to make any difference, really, uh, but for the sake of min-maxing, I should probably point that out. Uh, your main source of tanking is going to be the Knight and Bushi combination. And you can give that to any of the men in the party, really. I've gone ahead and given it to Varn, and it's a very, very powerful combination. The main reason is that the Bushi, which was the Samurai in the Japanese version, the international uh, job system, whatever it was called, back in the original release. You could only equip uh, one job per class. And the Samurai, which was the Bushi now, was very, very powerful. The only problem is it boosts its damage by magic and strength. And it only had magic stats. So you couldn't really make the full potential out of it. But now by... Com uh, by configuring it with the knight and by combining it with the knight we can also boost our strength stat so get a couple of good katanas on there and with that combination you're going to be dishing out a ton of physical damage and also tanking the enemies as well which is helpful of course one piece of equipment I'd like to show you before we actually move on is the diamond armlet and you can see that Fran's wearing it there as her accessory so you collect that from the first stage of the trials, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And when you equip it, what it does is basically change the treasures around. You can see that it says it searches the deepest recess of chests, coffers and the like. And that changes them around, I think to rarer versions. But it'd be interesting to see how we get on with that. So I'm going to equip it on Fran for a little while. And I'll show you where it was that I collected it from. But we're going to go ahead now and head back to the main menu having saved our game and begin the trials. I'm going to try and get through the first 10 with this setup. One thing I did forget to mention actually is that the build that I've gone for is a build that uses one of each job. So in other words, all 12 jobs are being used. You don't actually have to do that. You can actually get multiple characters using the same job. And you can really create some OP builds if you want to play that way. However, I was, I guess, a bit of OCD was kicking in. I did want to try out every single build, uh, every single job, sorry, for the build. So that's why I'm using all 12, but that is optional, you don't have to. Right then, so let's go ahead and select the trial mode here. And we'll bring in our save game, which is the Tomb of Wraithwell Valley of the Dead here. I'll overwrite my current progress. And trial mode, many are considered uh, that it's broken. Many have said that it's broken because you can get so much treasure from this place. I hope they don't patch it out, really, because it's a completely optional area to the game. Obviously, you access it from another menu, for crying out loud. So if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. But you can steal from most enemies. And I'm just fleeing here because I want to show you the treasure chests before we do anything else. In every single stage, at least as far as I'm aware of what I've seen so far, there's two treasure chests that spawn. They're like these blue orbs. And this is where you get the diamond armlet from. This one up here, which is always there. 
And then there's another treasure chest, I believe, around on the other side. And you'll get this, basically, in every single stage. Only a potion here. But you can get some really nice treasures. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Ed Jenny. Yeah, you can get some really nice treasures from the uh, chests in this place. Including some moats. Which do a nice amount of damage. So again, oh, obviously if you kill the enemies, then you're not going to be able to loot the treasures. Which can be a pain in some of the earlier trials here. The earlier stages where things are a little bit easier. I don't think we're going to do this one. I need to turn all the gambits off. Oh no, we've got the Tufter Phoenix down. So I couldn't get the other treasure, which was just down below. But the other th good thing about the trials is you basically get a ton of license points. There's a secret enemy in this one, by the way, in this particular stage. You saw those... Catwars that spawned at the start. You, you kill all those and the stage is over, as you'd expect. But if you head around here, there's a secret enemy. And you can actually kill this one as well. Uh, where's the other treasure? I'm not sure, but you probably have to set your other party members to attack the party leader's target or you're not going to... Uh, kill it really. Unless Vaughn could do enough damage here to get its health lower before the others die. But it doesn't look like it because his gambits are also set up. No, I think we're... Oh no. Okay, so you can't kill this guy if you don't kill him first. But I haven't shown you yet, you can actually steal from these enemies as well. And some of them have very nice items to steal. Mostly the named enemies. They usually have a common item you can steal, and a rare item as well. And there will be some treasure chests in this room, as there are in all the others. So you'll have to hold the fling button down if you want to go and find them, if you've got Gambit switched on, which I'd imagine you would have. So a fang, a soloyal fang, which does fire damage to all enemies in range. So I've got Fran set up to do some curing at the moment. We've got a nice amount of health as well, haven't we? Nearly 2,000 on some of our characters. Again, there's stuff you can steal from these guys. As well as treasure chests that you can loot from. We've got a windbreaker this time. Let's go and see what's in these chests. Slew things down just a touch. A gold needle. It can be a bit of a pain to actually loot the treasure, but there you go. Bubble moat, which actually doubles the health of one character for that battle. Or for a certain amount of time during the battle, I used it for one of those on the Belias encounter. We stuck it on Bossler, since we had no other jobs at that point. And you get quite a lot of license points, as I've said, especially at the end of the battles. So I'm not going to loot all the treasures around here. Many of them I have already collected by this point. So I was just showing them to you. So we do still have Vostler at this point, who's helping us out nicely. And we'll see if we can steal. This guy does actually have a nice steal item, if I remember, but it's a rare. So we've got the Tough to Phoenix down on this occasion, which is his common drop. But the good thing is you can do these over and over and over. There's no limit to the amount of times you can do these battles. Let's get a high potion going on Varn here. So some of the encounters, as you can see, do start to get challenging really quite quickly. I haven't set up my gambits properly yet either. 
Still waiting to do that. I want to try and get a, our equipment first and purchase new equipment from the vendors. So this is where things do start to pick up a little bit in difficulty. Let's go ahead for a moment and perhaps switch out our red battle mage here for our white mage. See what licenses I gave to... Sorry, what gambits I gave to Ash. Uh, just the good old curers. Let's try bringing in somebody else like Balthea. For a little bit of time, see how we get on. So this is quite a challenging encounter, as you can imagine. Just checking. I can't remember where the chests are in this area. But they're not down there. So these like to buff themselves and they do a tremendous amount of damage. So you do need to try and stay on top of your healing. And if you want to get the chests, which there's, I think there's one just over in that section there which I can see in the corner of my eye. Uh, you probably want to kill a few of them first so you don't get obliterated as you're trying to loot. So obviously as we start killing them one by one the battle becomes easier. And Ash is pretty much on healing duty at the moment. Using her white mage job. To do so, she's just about staying on top of everybody's health totals here. Make sure you invest license points in MP abilities as well. So that characters restore MP when enemies die. Amongst other situations at the same time. So I'm going to kill this fella, and then we'll go and see what's in that lovely chest over there. The reason why Varn's got no MP at the moment is basically because he's got an ability known as Infuse, which does a lot of healing at the cost of MP, and it's great for emergency usages. So I've set that up as a gambit for him. Let's just throw an ether of some kind onto Ash here, so that she can get back to doing what she does best. And it looks like we've got another enemy coming to the fray here. So let's have a quick go at stealing from it, see if there's anything exciting. I'm not sure if we have to kill this one or if the battle ends once we've killed this other fella that we've been fighting. <laughs> okay, that guy's dead and it looks like the battle's over now. So I'm glad we stole from that other guy. And this battle is probably a little bit easier in the sense that it's quite fast compared to what we just went through. <laughs> So as long as you can keep everyone healed, you should be sorted. And now we have Belias once more. And it's probably no surprise that Belias is quite challenging still. Especially with his fire attacks and what have you. So it might be a good idea here to bring in uh, a black mage such as we have in Pinello. If I can just get Balthea out of the target range here. We want to start hitting this guy with water attacks. Okay, Balthea is staying by the looks of things. We're going to say goodbye to Ash. Hello to Pinello. We're going to say goodbye to Van for now, being Franny so she can start healing again. And then I'm just going to check Pinello's gambits. Uh, I don't have foe weak to at the moment, so I'm just going to go to uh, the attack button here, 
And she should have aqua, yes. And I'm going to be risky and turn off her healing gambit for the time being. Hmm. And we'll just make sure that Fran can heal. So we'll give her some ethers. Balthy is only attacking with a basic dagger at the moment. I just don't have a good weapon to give him. But you can see that Aqua does a nice amount of damage, doesn't it? Let's just heal up ready for his large fiber jar attack, which he likes to do. He's certainly going down faster. Here we go. Here it comes. So don't forget this can cast oil. You'll need the handkerchief to remove that on any character that it may hit. And we avoided it. And we actually survived his fire jar attack, which was nice. I'm gonna check what Fran's doing, because she doesn't seem to be healing. Okay, so she just needs MP again. So I do need to just make sure that we can find ways of keeping their MP totals maxed up for our healers. That's it. So let's just throw a high potion on to help with the healing here. Because of our high health totals now, potions obviously aren't doing as much. But you can boost the power of potions in your license boards, which is something to bear in mind. And we need another ether off <laughs> Fran here. Ethers aren't that powerful, unfortunately, so probably do be stocking up on them, to be honest. And one thing I do need to do before we finish this battle is loot the chests, look, and perhaps steal from the boss as well. So let's go and grab this chest now. Wait for that treasure symbol to pop up. And then we'll see if there's another chest. There is. Oh boy, he's uh, decided he doesn't want us to go looting. Look. Let's go ahead and loot the arrow moat. He'll uh, Balthier up, I think, at this point before he gets obliterated. Who's got oil? A couple of the characters. So we'll just go ahead and use Handkerchief here, which removes oil nicely. And before we get absolutely obliterated, let's just pop Penella out of the party for a moment. Oh, we can't, she's being targeted. Okay, we'll bring Balthier out then, bring Varn back in. And then we'll heal Penella if possible before she dies. And we'll see on Varn here if it's possible to steal. Yeah, we've got the Sword of the Kings, which is something I do recommend. I believe you can equip that even without any jobs as well, which is uh, a nice thing, obviously. Right, Ethers, where are you? Not many left, actually. Okay, let's just take this guy out as quickly as possible. 
Is anyone going to raise Pinello? No, it doesn't matter now, look. Okay, so we've got some nice gear. We have some nice items from that 10 rounds in trial mode. And we're going to reward as well. 1,000 gear, 10 high potions and 15 handkerchiefs. Obviously, the trials give you better rewards as you make your way through. Every 10 stages or so. But I'm not going to go any further really today, I wouldn't have thought. And now it's going to automatically kick us off into the 11th trial. So let's just see if there's anything we can go ahead and loot while we're here. A dark moat. And a file of serum. Anything we can steal from this guy? He looks like he might be holding on to something, doesn't he? A quiver of fiery arrows. Nice. I'm not even going to try and stay alive on this encounter. You can quit, by the way, to the title screen at any point. So I'm going to do that. And then in order to bring your progress over into the main game, you load your game. I then load the trial version, uh, which actually for me is this one, the stage 11. We're going to choose yes. And then you will have to heal up at the save points. But all the rewards we just collected will now be brought over to the main game. There's the Sword of the Kings look, as you can see, a very nice two-hander. But folks, I'm going to finish off with the episode here today, so I hope you have enjoyed watching. If you have, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to hit the like button and come back soon. We're going to carry on with the story for Final Fantasy XII. Cheers all.